So my neighbor owns these two cars, high-end Porsche, uh, whatever, a Cybertruck. He tells me that the Cybertruck is a far better vehicle, much faster, much more advanced technology. He loves this thing, not so much for the style, but in terms of capability and features, he says that this is much better than this. So I'm off to uh, breakfast. No Cybertruck for me. I got this thing. Woo! Off to brunch, off to brunch. So the vibe coding is running into some more uh, headaches, uh, if you will. Another article came out recently where they talked about the problem with the vibe coding. And uh, essentially what I've been saying for, well, years now, last, last three years, uh, it's come to pass in that vibe coding has its uses, but when you get into very complex projects, it starts to fall apart real quick. You have sketchy code, inconsistencies in the code bases that Vibe Coding will produce. And it is good for what I said it was good for. It's good for prototyping. It's good, off, it's good for one-off projects, relatively simple projects. Uh, so it has its uses. But it's not the doom of developer. It's not like some HR department person or some suit who has no coding ability is going to be able to go in there and vibe code something uh, substantial. To go from getting 60-70% of it working to like 100% where it works well, doesn't bug up, etc. That's a huge gulf. It's a huge gap there. Makes a big difference. Big difference. So I'm up early in the morning here, Sunday morning, and... Uh, I hit the road really early so that uh, I avoid traffic. That's a key thing, I avoid traffic. I'm in a place called Westmount, which is a, a town adjacent to Montreal. It's like a suburb of Montreal, if you will, but it's like, there's some crazy person walking around here. <laughs> anyway, so it's a suburb of downtown Montreal, and uh, it's, I used to live around here. And uh, I just come here to a coffee shop I like to go to. I usually walk it, but now that the weather is becoming really bad, I avoid walking it. Too cold, too breezy. So I want to keep hammering home the message that to get ahead in this game, uh, life, you have, to, uh, you have to look at what is coming out. You got to look at what is emerging. You can't get so concerned about what was popular five years ago or even two years ago. You have to do what is emerging. And what is emerging these days, of course, is the uh, high-level tool sets in AI, low-code, no-code tool sets. That's where the action is. Even higher level than the, the big, large language models is, of course, using agents. There are companies out there. I did an ad for one recently where they have a series of agents. And agents are just AIs that have been uh, trained to do a very particular task. It takes time. Uh, to set these things up, but once you have them going, they can do a lot for you. So training agents is a uh, is is a potential huge opportunity for you. Leveraging agents have that that have been trained is a huge opportunity for you. So again, to get ahead in business, I've been in business for thirty six years. I've been in technology business since ninety. Well, I started writing code in ninety four. I got paid to do that in ninety four, but I didn't really get serious with it until like ninety six, ninety seven. Uh, I mean, full-time work. So, um, yeah, that's the opportunity. That's the opportunity. You want to look at those those type of platforms. You don't want to be concerned about what people did five years ago. 